All right, today is the day and we have some Leviathan action today. I have been working on rebuilding the engine and have got it installed at least to the point where we need to put the cab in place so that we can uh, connect some things up that are going to be uh, of course connected through the cab. So we're going to take a look at that today, putting the cab in place. It is not actually hooked up and uh, operational, but we're going to get it to the point where we can start doing those connections as mentioned. Anyway, let's jump in. Take a look at that. Well, to get this whole project on the move, we need to move the cab out of the way. It is sitting in the back end of the shop here and the engine is on the other side. No way to get it past. So uh, put it on a couple of uh, car dollies and roll it out. I believe it weighs about 580 pounds, somewhere close to 600 pounds maybe. And once it's out of the way, we can bring the chassis back up and uh, change the last few things out. I have put a new independent, no, not new, but rebuilt the independent GM nine and a half inch differential, put in 513 gears and air lockers, and then change out the shocks and bushings up front. So it's time to get this engine back into the beast. And of course, um, anybody that's done this knows it's just a matter of uh, moving and shifting, prying until you can get that first bolt in, then everything seems to go together a little bit easier. And once we got that engine in, it's time to start assembling some things, but we found that there's a little bit of a clearance problem. I was kind of expecting this, but didn't want to try to cut this notch originally until we had the engine in place so we knew exactly where it to go. We have to cut a little section out of the floor, but that's okay, we have bracing in place to support it around that. With that notch out of the way, the intake manifold, which was the big clearance problem, fits fine. We'll get that put in place. And we'll also start putting on some of the engine components, at least those that uh, won't be in the way. We'll put the alternator on. We've got fuel rails, belts, and the headers that go in there. But we needed the cab in place to finish the exhaust system itself. But with that fuel rail in, it's time to get this cab ready to go. Now I have set up uh, a system with this winch that goes up and hooks to the roof of my lean-to and runs into the back of Leviathan. Temporary battery stuck on there to run the winch. And we're gonna use Leviathan's winch to lift the cab up. Now with a straight lift, we got a little bit of a problem is the, the chassis is back a little bit further. So we have to keep lifting and then allowing the cab or the chassis to roll forward until we can get it up high enough that it will clear. Once we got it up in the air high enough to clear everything, we're off a little bit. It's about 18 inches too far to the left, and so we need to move it over to the right. So it's just a matter of uh, lowering it back down while pulling it over to the left, sitting on some boards until we got it in position. And then we had to lift the nose up and set it on a couple of saw horses to get it level. And that's where it's sitting right now. Everything's in position where it needs to be. A couple of uh, straps holding things in place just so nothing moves while I build the motor mounts, or the cab mounts, I should say. But you can see the engine access panel there, front and back. And here is the frame of the cab sitting down on the chassis nose. And we'll be building some mounts there that will pivot and allow the cab to swing forward with some shock absorbers in the back for the back connection. Now, as a little bonus here, you may have noticed in all this work, there's a, some kind of strange aluminum frame on the back end of the cabin platform. And here I am building that. I've got a son-in-law gonna come be the clamps to hold the thing in place while I tack weld it. Once I had all this uh, framework tack weld, put my spool gun back on the welder and uh, welded it all up, mounted it to the back of the cabin platform. Now this rack is actually going to be holding the utilities for the vehicle. This is gonna hold our generator and AC unit. Now with it installed, it mounts also to one of the main upright poles, feet bonded and bolted to the main frame members of the floor. And then we're gonna put our generator set on there. Now got my son's help, cause this thing is heavy. I think it's close to 200 pounds and you're gonna see a struggle here in just a minute, try to get it up. The height of the floor was great, but that extra eight inches made it kind of difficult to get that thing up there. Now this is a, uh, 900 or 9.4 kilowatt generator, 75, 7.5 kilowatt run, running 
runs on tri-fuel 50 amps at 240 volts so it should be able to power about anything that i come across in fact i'm going to use this thing to power my home when i need to i will just plug leviathan into my home and if there's any kind of emergency, this would be a good vehicle to go and assist in places and have backup power for other places. The next thing this rack holds is our mini split heat pump. This is a super efficient mini split system, 22 sear if you're into that kind of thing. Should be very efficient and is made to heat and cool about 1200 square feet and we will be way shy of that so it should be plenty efficient maybe a little too much but it is going to be a powerful unit to do the same thing as the generator be able to accommodate more than it is required anyway that's the end of this video in the part of seeing these things installed but there it is a pan you kind of see in the shape of this thing come together Time to get panels put on the outside of this thing. Well, there it is. The cab is sitting there in place and we are going to be able to move forward with a lot of things, getting steering connected, all that wiring harness put back in and of course, hydraulic lines for cooling and things like that. Well, I'm going to put a link up over here to some videos to show you some other Leviathan features that have brought us to this point. So please jump over, take a look at those and thanks for stopping by today. Come back, see us again.